The world has become a lot more socially aware over the last few years, which I believe to be a massive positive in terms of us all being able to understand each other and get on better. However, we're in a sort of a weird teething point in this evolution of our culture, with things, sayings and views that were once acceptable now being questioned and debated. An example of this being the case of the Washington football team, who in July 2020, after increasingly strong backlash from the public as well as team sponsors, decided to retire their former name of the Washington Redskins, which, yeah, anyway, now a year on, and with fans in this year's NFL season being allowed back in the stadium, the now known Washington football team have announced that they are banning their old tradition of wearing headdresses and face paint within the FedEx Field Stadium. Their statement said, quote, we are excited to welcome everyone back wearing their burgundy and gold. However, the Native American inspired ceremonial headdress or face paint may no longer be worn into the stadium. The team's president, Jason Wright, went on to say, It's no secret why we began this journey of finding a new brand identity. It centered around our old name and its use of Native American imagery and racialized language. Though I wasn't here for the rescinding of the name, I believe it was done with faith that the connective ties of the fan base run deep and that the deeply loved traditions and positive aspects of our identity can be preserved and even enhanced under a new name that does not offend any member of our community. Quite simply, it's the right thing to do. Now, there is a rugby team in the Premiership with similar branding and traditions, with their fans dressing up in a similar attire in the stadium, with similar chants and all that kind of thing. That team of course being the Exeter Chiefs, who have come under similar pressure and last year went through a similar process as the Washington football team with an internal review, but the Exeter Chiefs came to a different conclusion. Their statement last year read, The Exeter Rugby Club board today underwent a detailed review of the club's branding following issues raised by the group Exeter Chiefs for Change. The process has included looking into lengthy submissions from those who wish to see immediate change and from those who are content that the current branding is not disrespectful to indigenous groups. A detailed dossier of all evidence was compiled ahead of today's meeting and was seen by all members of the board and reviewed. Part of the club's review has seen the club engage with its sponsors and key partners to seek their views and they have also listened to the response of our supporters, the wider rugby community and certain sections of the Native American community, all of whom have provided us with detailed observations in letters, emails, social content and videos. Content provided to the board indicated that the name Chiefs dated back into the early 1900s and had a long history with people in the Devon area. The board took the view that the use of the Chiefs logo was in fact highly respectful. It was noted over the years we have had players and coaches for a wide range of nationalities and cultures. At no time have any players, coaches or their families said anything but positive comments about the branding or culture that exists at the club. The one aspect which the board felt could be regarded as disrespectful was the club's mascot, Big Chief, and as a mark of respect we have decided to retire him. The club will be making no further comment on this matter. Hmm, okay. You can draw your own conclusions from that, but here's mine. They basically said, we hear you but our people like it and we don't see it as racially insensitive, so yeah, bye. But you can have the mascot as a token gesture. Okay, thanks. Bye. Look, I get it, it's not ideal. From the club's perspective, they've got to change all these things about your club because the world suddenly changed its mind about something you presume was okay. And I'm not gonna act like I wasn't ignorant before either or knew anything about what was actually going on, because I didn't. But ignorance is no longer an excuse and you're on the wrong side of history here. And if you're one of those people who are thinking, well then where does this stop? Are we gonna have to change the names of other things like Saracens? Maybe, it stops when it stops, man. If I made a team called the Dickheads and I made the excuse that it's been its name for ages and it originally was just about a team of Richards and you're ripping the soul out of my club and none of my mates who liked it have ever complained, that just wouldn't fly. A crap name's a crap name, even more so when it's insensitive about a marginalized group in society. Oh, but you can have our mascot of the massive cock. We agree that was too far. No further statements. It's just a bit frustrating, especially since legit, everything else they've done behind the scenes, they've done the right way. Being a club from the lower leagues, growing homegrown talent, sticking with a coach with a vision and building a massive fan base in the area. They've literally achieved everything that you could possibly achieve in the club game. But this just isn't it and I believe they've genuinely made a massive mistake and since the European Cup final the club's reputation in mine and many other people's eyes have been on a bit of a decline. I won't go into all the stuff with extra players talking about Covid slash lockdown conspiracies as well as stuff on vaccinations it's there if you want to look it up you probably already know how I feel about it. Anyway it's just all merging together to make them not really as likeable a team as they should be. 
and I fear a club who has shown others in lower leagues that it is possible to reach the very top of the club rugby mountain will not be revered and respected as much as they probably should be. And because of the club's stance on this issue, I can only really see things changing when sponsors and broadcasters start putting pressure on them. Money talks, but weirdly, that happening all depends on us actually, and making it the biggest deal it can possibly be, because it is. Support and follow Exeter Chiefs for change and make your voices heard if you agree with what I'm saying, because I believe, like the president of the Washington football team stated, it's just the right thing to do. Signed, N.G.J.